Good morning, everybody, and welcome to morning prayer on a Thursday. Today I'm at St Denis Church uh, for a change, so it's uh, nice to to be here and to worship. Uh, of course, we've heard that churches um, are able to open from next week for private prayer, um, and everything else is being debated. Um, our churches won't be able to be open all the time because we can't know who's coming in and who's coming out um, and how to clean. So um, when we've worked all of that out, our churches will be available. But if you're desperate to come in, um, let me know and we can arrange a time. Um, doing it by appointment um, is easy enough because then we know who's in who's out. Um, so this morning, morning prayer. If you are following the readings, this morning, then our psalm today, set for the today, is 147. Alleluia, how good is it to make music to our God. 147, our first uh, our psalm. And our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, and it's chapter 8, verses 2 to 16. Um, and we will be, I will be reading our New Testament reading, which is taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, first letter to Corinthians, so 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 1 to 17. So um, that's the one I'll be reading this morning, and the others, if you would like to read for yourselves at home, those are the ones set for today. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you righteousness. I have taken by the, you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the, light, to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no others. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you righteousness. An opening canticle taken from the book of Isaiah, from chapter 42. And so our reading for this morning, taken from the book, uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, starting at the first verse. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all put under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptised into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred to be an example to us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolatrous as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in that single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and they were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and they were destroyed by the destroyer. 
These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of the idols. I speak to you as sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless is not a sharing in the is it not the sharing in the in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not sharing in the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake in the one bread. Here ends the first lesson. Goodness, there's an awful lot in that, isn't there? Um, Paul writing to the people of Corinth. In, in that day, the city of Corinth, and now, um, was quite a cosmopolitan city. There were people from all over the world that, that met and traded there. There were, there were the Romans, of course, um, and people who um, travelled across the silk routes um, and settled there for a time or moved on. Uh, it was a, a big hub of, um, of trade and, as Paul is saying, immorality. Um, maybe not so much, well yes, immorality I guess. Uh, people from all different lands with all different ways. And Paul is writing to the small group of Christian people who are there, uh, to the church in Corinth, to tell them not to be overtaken by these other people, um, not to go the way of the world, but to keep to their own way, the way of Christ. And that is the writing for us today. Paul is saying, look at these ancient people, thousands of years back, and use them as an example. And he is saying to us today, look at these people thousands of years back, and use them as an example of today, that it's so easy to be taken over by the world. Idolatry, uh, worshipping another god. But it doesn't mean that we suddenly turned to a different faith and we worship a different god. It's things like money. It's things like food. It's things like television. It's things like other people. It's not worship in the way that we perhaps worship in church, but putting that first. We need more money. Money is the important thing. Putting that first. Putting our family first before God, which is a daft thing to do, because if we put God first for our family, then he will look after all of us. God is the most important thing. And this is what Paul is trying to tell these people of Corinth and saying that that's sometimes what our ancestors forgot about. And so they didn't make it to the promised land, but we will make it to the promised land. But then there's that very difficult bit. There's a few verses that says, God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. Such a difficult verse, that, because, well, some of us are tested beyond our means. When we lose loved ones, when everything collapses, it does feel like perhaps we can't endure it. He does say earlier on that everyone suffers. And, and that's true, there's nothing he says that one person hasn't, that one person suffers that someone else hasn't also suffered. So we're in it together. And I think what he's trying to say is that there is more to life than this. That if we can only hold on to that hope beyond our suffering, 
that there is more, that God is with us, that he walks with us in it, that he became a human being and suffered himself so he knows what it is to suffer and that he walks beside us, that perhaps then we can manage, we can endure our suffering. I always find that a difficult one because, you know, I meet people who have been through dreadful sufferings and of course, you know, Andrew travels the world and brings back stories and we're still in touch with people who have been through the most hideous, unimaginable suffering and seeing the suffering of their loved ones and the death of their loved ones. Lost everything. And you think, oh my goodness, God, why? But I think what we're saying here is that we are human and the suffering of the world is real and we can't ignore it. But what we can do is, is to hold on to our faith, to hold on to the fact that God is with us throughout that suffering, that he knows what it is to suffer and that this is only part of our life, that we're promised something more. And maybe that little bit of hope will help us through our suffering. And then he says, with the testing, you will also provide the way out so you'll be able to endure it. And perhaps that endurance helps us help others through their suffering and us being able to tell them that there is someone who walks beside us who loves us all in that suffering and that we're all one and all of us who break bread together and drink from the cup we are one body and we are united with God and with each other. A difficult reading this morning, one to ponder on. So let's pray. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burnt. I have called you by name. You are mine. And so Father, we offer you today all our suffering, the suffering of the world. We pray for ourselves as we go about our daily business. We pray for those whom we will meet, perhaps on our walks or at work, perhaps through Zoom meetings. We pray for the work that we will be doing, for the people that we are talking through, talking to. We pray for all of those who are taking their children to school. And we pray for our schools in our benefits in North Baddersley and in Ampfield and Hursley. We pray for our little saints, for all those children and families for whom this is a testing and difficult time. We pray for our whole community, for all of those traveling to work, for all of those who are suffering ill health or are still in isolation and still not able to see anyone, for those in the vulnerable categories. And Lord, we think of our wider world. We think of all people and how some are mistreated, have injustice in their lives, suffer violence just because of the colour of their skin. And we know, Lord, that every person is made in your image and loved equally by you. 
help us to find ways to love our neighbours. We pray for all of those areas in the world where there is still war and conflict. For people suffering, not having enough food, not having medical care. We think of all those places that seem to have dropped from our news in these last 12 weeks. For the people in Yemen, in Iraq, in Iran, in Syria. For those places in the Far East that have hit by, been hit by tornadoes and bad weathers that we've just not heard about. For all your suffering people, Lord, we pray your arms around them. And we think of those who have died recently, for families who are unable to grieve, who were not able to be with their loved ones as they died. And we pray particularly for the family of Edward Thompson, whose funeral takes place today. And we give thanks, Lord, for all of those whom we have loved and see no more. For the love we shared. For the laughter. And we thank you for the many blessings. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in, in this wonderful sacrament, you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So of course that collect refers to the passage we heard from 1 Corinthians when Jesus talks about how when we share the bread and the wine that we are one body and of course although we cannot share at the moment we remain one body because of that promise God gives us. So let us lift our hearts and our souls and all those worries and pains and the joys to God by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.